after you have the stretch your better slots uh selected line up on the wall there are we getting shot right perfect so if you all open up your inventory right now uh, this is the standard kit a stretch a better loadout will get always uh, There may be slight variations in terms of what you get where you get it uh, For example, not all uniforms support the exact same size um, If your uniform doesn't support 30 bandages, but only 20 it will only add 20 So if you ever encounter yourself having not enough supplies that you wish you would have for example blood You are always welcome as a certified stretcher better if you're acting the role To pick it up during an operation from a medical crate you have first dips as a stretcher better on a medical crate Anyhow before I uh, go over what you all should have in your pockets Let's go over and go back to the military unit. So come with me and take a ride to the military unit. All right, so please line up closely around me. Put your weapons on your back because you won't be needing them. Just make sure you can hear me, but don't stand under my nostrils or you may get snot upon yourself. That's not very good. Anyhow, so welcome everyone to the uh, stretch better module. Uh, what is a stretch better? We'll begin with that. Uh, but of course we'll begin with something more important after you complete this module attend it throughout aka you can't dip out halfway through because that will mean you will miss vital information if you complete it start to finish you'll be a certified stretcher better now what's a stretcher better a stretcher better is the intermediary between an orderly and a standard rifleman within a section Historically, stretcher bedders would have been the little assistance of an orderly, which is basically a glorified nurse uh, who would function under a trauma surgeon. An orderly could give blood, stitch people up, all that stuff, couldn't perform surgery, of course. Uh, what is this? What has an orderly got on him? An orderly just has medical supplies and a tiny little revolver for self defense. An orderly is not allowed to fire upon anyone or pick up a weapon uh, unless he's in immediate danger. Uh, what does this mean? You would run around your section, or you would actually be separated, but you would run around near the platoon with only a revolver, never going to use it ever, and only healing people. Uh, for some, that has been interesting in the past, but those are the exceptions, and they usually one to two blokes who are a bit crazy in the head. Uh, so it was very unpopular, so we've decided to take the historical uh, in-between, uh, which is a stretcher better. Stretcher better, like I said, little assistance of a uh, orderly. Uh, they would usually be integrated within a section, or they'd just be a bloke picked out. Uh, this lad would have uh, training in basic first aid, so he could bandage you, he could stitch you, uh, but that's about it. But, of course, you will have full permissions. What's the benefit of a stretcher better? Stretcher better is just a bloke with extra medical supplies. He still has his firearm. He still maintains his uh, own role within the section. So, uh, that's that. Any um, questions about orderlies or stretcher betters from anyone? I am one. Is there the possibility of being an orderly in, inside the rank structure we currently have? Yes and no. Uh, there won't be a dedicated slot for an orderly assigned to you. Uh, however, if you are playing in an operation and you are designated to be a stretcher better, here's a handy tip you could do. You could ditch your rifle and ditch your extra ammunition okay. yeah, and grab yeah. extra medical supplies. Just make sure you inform uh, Grant, uh, a CO or your NCO um, that you are dipping your rifle. Of course, if you open up your inventory, you're packed full to the brim, so you can all open your inventory. You'll see your pack's full. You've got a ton of bandages in your uniform, morphine, epinephrine. Uh, you've got stuff in your webbing next to your ammunition, of course. And you've got a backpack full of stuff. Now, what takes up the most space on a stretch better? The rifle, the ammunition, the bayonet, and the entrenching tool. If you decide to go that way and uh, want to become your own homebrew orderly, you can <laughs> drip them all uh, off in the base. Just make sure you put them in a neat crate or hide them somewhere. Don't leave them out in the open. Right, so 
orderlies and stretch matters are crucial during our missions because good health of the platoon is the key to success. When half your platoon is crippled, fuck no, you're not getting up that hill uh, because everyone's dying on the bottom of it and the only boys mm -hmm. you have left are about 10 dudes uh, that can actually walk while the rest is limping up the hill. Any skirmish uh, can result in a large amount of casualties, delays and misunderstandings and even disaster without stretcher bedders. You people... Uh, I would say the second most important people in the entire unit after your NCOs and COs because they draw up the stuff. You literally maintain your own well-being of your section and other sections. Basically, I'm going to cover a few things. Uh, it's mostly going to be theoretical, meaning I tell you a lot of stuff and tell you stuff uh, you should memorize as it is all uh, very important. I'll take you through a uh, quick guide on hey this person has this symptom, what do I need to do? So you can treat people on the field way quicker uh, by just hearing what they have to say. And then I'll go on to a little practice, uh, which is target practice for me and medical practice for you, as I will bind you up in pairs and shoot you in random parts of your body. Isn't that fun? They're blanks, trust me, I think. <laughs> as told priorly, uh, if your medical kit does not support all the equipment you would wish to have, for example, you only have 20 bandages or when you feel far more comfortable with 30, you are always welcome as a stretcher bearer and only when performing your role to go over to an advanced medical crate, such as here, and to loot it for whatever you need. So this can be bandages, blood, plasma, anything anything your little heart desires all right you have first dips always as a stretch better so i'll quickly run through all this medical mumbo jumbo of what we have so to start off we have injectors uh we use two main sort of injectors you may open up your inventory and uh, locate your own injector so we have two sorts we have epinephrine and morphine uh, there are two very clear changes uh, between the injectors. Epinephrine is medical adrenaline. It increases your heart rate, aka the beats per minute, the BPM. Then you have morphine. Morphine is a strong opium-based painkiller. What is important about morphine? It decreases your consciousness. Thereby, it lowers your heart rate and sensation of pain. Now keep that in mind, it lowers your heart rate. What does okay. this mean? Morphine lowers your heart rate, epinephrine counteracts it by increasing your heart rate again. If you decide to pick up any other injectors, it's purely on your own knowledge and well-being, as they sort of act in the same manner, sometimes with the less side effects. But we like to keep it to two simple ones uh, we will always have in the field. We have the two types of injectors. Now, you also have a couple of symptoms and stuff that can involve with the injectors. So, we have a blatant term which is cardiac arrest. Cardiac arrest is heart failure and it's caused often by too much medication but it can also relate to the heartbeat, the BPM, being critically <coughs> high or low. Also, can be related to blood pressure being critically high or low or a combination of all three being overdose or morphine Incredibly low BPM or no BPM and no blood pressure because you have about 15 chest side bullet holes in you Do not overuse morphine and epinephrine as it can cause cardiac arrest uh, Typically max you could go is two to three shots of morphine and Always check pulse Move over to your bandages. You got three main types of bandages uh, which every guardsman has, and every stretcher better as well. These are the field dressings, which are the basic bandage. Field dressings are your average treatment, jack of all trade, master of none. Uh, what are they handy for? Uh, small bruises, small cuts, small wounds. And that's about it. Then you have your packing bandages. The packing bandages have a higher chance to reopen than field dressings. 
but they take longer to reopen compared to other bandages. So they stay on for much longer, but they're not very good. <laughs> now, next on, we move to elastic bandages, and these are the favorites from everyone, uh, because elastic bandages can treat any kind of wound in just usually a one or two bandages. But they have a much higher chance of reopening and a shorter reopening delay compared to other bandages. Meaning it will flop off way faster compared to other bandages. But it usually he uh, heals people up the fastest. And then we have the tourniquet. The tourniquet is basically an emergency uh, appliance that restricts all blood flow to a limb. And it can only be applied to your limbs. So both legs and both arms. Can't be attached to your head, otherwise you die. Uh, can't be attached to your chest because the thing is too tiny. Only for the limbs. Always remember to remove a tourniquet after the patient is patched up because otherwise your limb will become necrotic and fall off because it doesn't have any blood flow. Um, only use a tourniquet in case of extreme emergencies. So let's say a person got hit by a mortar shell. Bleeding from every fucking hole possible. Apply tourniquets to the limbs that are bleeding. Patch his head and chest up and then work on the limbs. As long as you have a tourniquet on the limbs, the person can't bleed out from that specific limb. But a chest and a head will always continue to bleed no matter what you do until you bandage it up. When a tourniquet is applied, it's very important to remember that you cannot do the following. You can't measure the pulse or the blood pressure on that limb because all blood flow is cut off. You can't administer medication to that limb because the medication can't flow through the body because of the tourniquet. So if you inject 15 uh, shots of morphine into someone's right arm when there's a tourniquet on, well good on you, uh, he's now a druggie, uh, but the morphine isn't flowing through his body. So it's just staying in his arm. It has nowhere to go. Can't flow up through the rest of the body. And the final one is you can't administer IV. So uh, IV fluids can't flow through the body because of the tourniquet as well. Same thing with medication. It's literally cut off. Wouldn't it be quicker to just uh, elastic bandage it instead of tourniquet? No. <laughs> okay. Because it can often require multiple elastic bandages uh, to fix someone up. And elastic bandages, as I said, they will pop off again. They have a high chance to reopen. So if you literally ate a mortar shell, uh, like you're Herman Goering and you're in a hungry mood, uh, imagine your entire body is damaged, you're bleeding from everywhere, you're going to bleed out in about 10 seconds. Let's say 30 seconds then. It is going to matter because if you bandage you, if I bandage you up and you're on the floor bleeding out, you got hit by a mortar shell. If I'm done bandaging your left arm and I move on to your right arm, and by the time I've got your right arm bandaged up, your left arm's bloody open again. So it has no use. You're better off tourniqueting in extreme situations like that. So mortar shells, lots of bullet holes, fell from a great height perhaps. Just got if it's too much to handle for you, shirt. apply a tourniquet. Alright? Any other questions? Yeah, I have one question. Yeah, go ahead. How long does the epinephrine and morphine act? How long does it work? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be able to give you a specific time. However, it works for a lengthy period of time. I think it's about 30 minutes, something like that. Yeah, it, it is quite high. It's either 15 or 30 minutes. Yes, yeah, so epinephrine is like five minutes, I guess. No, epinephrine is about the same duration. Just stays yeah. in your system. Jesus. <laughs> Don't give someone like five shots of morphine after each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just try and stick to one or two, maybe three if you're pushing it. All right? So, moving on to surgery. If you go into your backpack, you have two special kits. You have a surgical kit and a personal aid kit. A surgical kit is used to stitch your wound shut to prevent it from reopening. You can only do this after you've uh, bandaged up the wound. You can't just stitch a bleeding wound. You need to stitch a wound uh, for it to never reopen again and to be fixed. It can be used on any part of the body, meaning your head, your limbs, your chest, anywhere. 
stitching time uh, varies depending on the size of the wound, the location of the wound, and the amount of wounds. If you've got 15 little pickle-sized holes in your chest, it's going to take longer than just a single cut on your arm. Uh, your chest and your head typically take the longest up to stitch. So we'll move on to the next part, which is the personal aid kit. The personal aid kit is basically a little cheat. Um, you can use it to fully get someone up, back up to full health, so the health you spawn in. This includes blood, pain and wounds. It's a rather quick way and a cheating manner to get someone back up to full health. However, the patient must be fully stabilized before you get the option to use a pack. So their heart rate has to be solid and acceptable. Their blood has to be solid and acceptable. They can't be in a too much of a pain. They can't have any open wounds, etc, etc. So it's a very niche, rare occurrence, really. You only basically heal it up, uh, use it up to fully heal someone where you've got a lot of downtime. And it also typically takes very long to pack someone. Uh, so it's barely usable. Uh, personally, I ditch my pack in favour for more plasma. Because I use plasma a lot more than I use a pack. Right. So, now we move on to blood. Blood. You got a fuck ton of it in your blood, uh, in your body. Uh, a human has on average 6,000 milliliters of blood in their bloody, uh, in their body. Yeah, <laughs> bloody blood in your body. Um, that's quite a lot. Why am I telling you this? It can occur that you sometimes need to pump someone with three or four liters of blood to get them back up. So. Keep that in your mind that it's normal. A human has six liters of blood. If you need to give someone three liters, that's half the blood a person has in his body. It's entirely possible. Um, you can see the amount of blood lost in your medical menu. So if you press a uh, control windows key, you go to self interactions. You can open your medical menu through two ways. You can either look up on the medical tab and look around to your torso, your left arm, your right arm, your pulse, your leg. And that's uh, a very easy and quick and dirty way to see it. You also have a medical menu which you can access by pressing H. It comes down to what you prefer on your own. Uh, where you can also select different parts of the body and then click on example medication and administer medication. Uh, in the medical menu on the right at overview it will tell you what body part you're looking at and it will say no injuries on this body part if you go into your medical menu so that's the control windows one and then looking up you will see a menu pop up in the top light uh, top left with a human being and then a tab that says injuries no injuries on this body part in a case that someone has lost blood, it will be seen in big red letters in this uh, tab. Um, it can say a few things, which I'll cover later on. Uh, for blood, we use blood plasma. Uh, what is so important about it? Nothing really. We could just use blood, uh, but we prefer to use plasma because it's a slightly more historical route. Uh, blood and plasma, interchangeable, they act the same. Plasma is basically 55% of the blood volume, mainly consists of white blood cells, proteins, glucose, and other stuff in water. Uh, blood is just un unfiltered, regular blood. Plasma is used to restore the volume of the blood in your body, and administering plasma will increase your blood pressure. Imagine you're filling up the, the gas tank to your car works the exact same way. Um, like I said, a human has 6,000 milliliters of blood in their body. And plasma will come in the varying amounts. So um, if you go into your backpack, you should have a lot of 500s. But there's also other variations. You have plasma in 1,000 milliliters, which is 1 liter. You have it in 500 milliliters, which is 0.5 liter, half a liter. And you have it in 250 milliliters, which is 0.25 liter. Um, 
I would say it is very important to create a bit of a difference in what kind of uh, stuff you're carrying. I usually carry about four to five liters of blood in just liter bags. And I usually carry about six bags of 500 milliliters. The 250s are barely useful because if someone needs 250 milliliters of blood, they're usually fine without it as well. So, um, as I covered before, in the medical menu, you will see how much blood a person has lost. These come in three gradients. Uh, so it will say one of three things in those big red letters. It will say lost some blood, which means a person has lost 500 milliliters to 250 milliliters. Barely noticeable. If it says lost a lot of blood, that will mean he lost more than a liter, which is quite a bit. And then you have the final one, which can be a little bit scary. It will say lost a fatal amount of blood. Fatal amount of blood doesn't mean someone's dead on the floor yet, and you shouldn't give up on that person. Fatal amount of blood will usually mean that a person won't have a heart rate because they don't have any blood pressure because they don't have any blood in their body so it can't pump around. So, you can still revive them if they've got a fatal amount of blood lost. As a stretcher better, you are quite important and you can get, give orders to people around you. Don't be afraid to ask a random guardsman who's standing next to you to be your little assistant to help patch someone up, to bandage someone up, to give them CPR, or to, for example, uh, cover you or provide overwatch for you, all right? You can order people to do that or at least request them. Of course, don't go up to Galloway and ask him to be your little assistant or an NCO. Make sure it's a guardsman who's not incredibly busy at that time. So, someone lost a fatal amount of blood. Get an assistant to apply CPR on that person, and you can apply two to three uh, large bore IVs of a thousand milliliters. Uh, if you do this on different limbs, it increases the flow speed. As long as a person applies CPR, uh, that person uh, will have a heartbeat, and the blood will flow through his body. If you apply three to four uh, IVs, and the person's on the floor, has lost a fatal amount of blood, but nobody's performing CPR, that blood is not flowing into him because his heart's not pumping it around, okay? So you can entirely still get someone up. Uh, generally speaking, our ACE medical settings have an incredibly high drip speed for IVs and are officially classified as large bore IVs. Basically, it means they're very big fuck all tubes, so a lot of liquids can flow in as fast as possible, all right? So we have an incredibly high flow rate, which means you don't have to spend a lot of time filling someone back up again. Do I have any questions about blood from anyone? Just, why does no it questions look like about blood? pee? Why does it look like pee? Well, I tell you, uh, for you that don't know, I'm actually paramedic in real life, so I don't know this stuff. Uh, blood plasma is basically filtered out blood. It looks like piss because it's a mixture of white blood cells, which mainly give it the white texture, uh, the yellow texture, sorry, uh, plasma, uh, and uh, little uh, conjunction cells and liquids. Um, if you've ever had a very nasty wound on your body in real life, you might have noticed there's like little yellow pus stuff. Yeah, that's white blood cells. Uh, they are very dead. Uh, plasma is the same thing, except they're very alive. So basically, imagine blood without the red blood cells, and that's it. That's literally plasma. They used it in World War II, because plasma you could keep uh, good for far longer. You didn't have to cool it specifically. Meanwhile, blood would go bad very quickly. Uh, because it's blood. It will clot up and it would typically not handle hot temperatures well. So that's why we use plasma. But it's the same as blood, really. In a in ACE, I mean, not in real life. Uh, I've covered the kit and what your kit means. Uh, but having stuff in your pockets doesn't mean anything without knowledge. So here comes the very big theoretical part. Uh, 
is basically covered in uh, two parts, which is the uh, circulatory system and uh, the basically the quick guides on, oh, fuck, what do I need to do? So, circulatory system, uh, tractus circulatoris, consists of several things. Main thing is your pulse or heartbeat or BPM. You can call it any of these, it all means the same. You can measure it on your arms, your legs, and on your torso, which is an artery in the groin. So if you press control windows key on yourself, I'll quickly assign everyone medic, because I'm not sure if that done by the server already. Ba -ba 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 -ba. There we go, I gave you all medical perps. So if you press control windows key, and you go to medical, and then go to your arm to check pulse. What does that say for you? 80. 80. 80. 80. All right. So, uh, what is your uh, pulse BPM heart rate? It's basically how fast your heart is pumping per minute, how many times it squeezes together. Uh, the average is 60 beats per minute. I have no clue why it's 80 currently, uh, but the training server is running on old medical settings. Uh, so the average, the normal, even in ACE, is 60 BPM. That's the normal. It can go slightly above, it can go slightly lower. As with anything medical, you have a very large uh, margin to work with. It can go 10 lower, it can go 10 higher, doesn't matter as long as it doesn't go too low anything below 40 bpm is too low anything above 90 is too high all right now when can you have a high bpm a high heart rate usually is caused by pain pain causes your heart to beat like mad uh, because there's a bunch of adrenaline in your body um Low heart rate can indicate a need of epinephrine. Like I said prior, morphine lowers your consciousness. Thereby, it lowers your heart rate. So if you use too much morphine, your heart rate will go down too significantly. In which case, you'll need to counteract it with... Epinephrine. Epinephrine, yeah, because it's medical adrenaline. So it's quite, it's quite easy, you always have a counteract. Right, so, is everything clear about blood pressure? Uh, blood pressure, pulse. Yep. Yeah. Alright, perfect. Pulse, really easy. Now we move on to a bit more challenging stuff. Blood pressure. So, what is blood pressure? Blood pressure is the pressure that your blood is going through your veins with. Um, it's measured in two uh, little parts. You have systolic and diastolic pressure. And it's always divided between a slash symbol. Why is this important? Because I want you to know what the numbers mean and what the little slash mean, rather than be clueless. Uh, systolic pressure is basically when the heart squeezes together. It's the number on the left. Diastolic is when the heart releases after having squished together, which is the number on the right, and it's divided by a slash. Now, if you go to control windows key, go to your own body part, uh, and go ahead and check your blood pressure. Now, can you tell me, what is your blood pressure? 120 over 80. What was that? 120 over 80. 120 over 80. Does everyone see their own blood pressure? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Abel? Yep. All right, perfect. So, blood pressure. The numbers. 120 over 80 is the ideal blood pressure. Uh, you can deviate from this, ple uh, from this uh, pressure. There's a margin of play with it. A lower blood pressure of 110 over 70 is perfectly fine. Uh, same with 100 over 60, for example. I'll cover what's acceptable, what's low, and what's high right now. So, acceptable is 90 over 60 to uh, 140 over 90. That's acceptable. You don't have to do anything. It is low 
when it is above 90 over 60. It is high when it's above 140 over 90. All right? Note, I said over all the time. The little slash symbol you pronounce as over, just so you uh, clearly indicate to the other person what a blood pressure is. In the field, let's say Abel is healing someone up. Moffat doesn't have anything to do, so he goes and check in on Abel because uh, Haas is dead on the floor. Yeah. Moffat can ask, hey, what's the blood pressure? If Abel goes, what 2080? Uh, Moffat will be very confused. <laughs> right? So the slash symbol is pronounced as over. Now, why can a blood pressure be too low? It can be too low if a patient has lost a lot of blood. If there's not enough liquid to flow around with the body with force. Or if the beats per minute, the BPM, is too low. So there's not enough or frequent beats to pump the blood around. That's the main two reasons why blood pressure can be too low. Why can it be too high? Uh, too much blood in the body or a too uh, high heart rate? One of the two things. Right. So, does everyone understand everything about pulse and blood pressure? Yeah. No questions about it? Yeah, so you can have a uh, low blood and a... Uh... And beat, uh, sorry, and high uh, beat rate. Pulse. Yeah. And yeah. you can have a high pressure, blood pressure, right? Okay. So um, typically, when you have a high heartbeat and a, a low blood pressure, you've lost a lot of blood. That's the only way it can happen. And you are in pain, so your heart's working extra hard. That's why you have uh, low blood pressure and a high BPM. If you have a low uh, BPM and a high blood pressure, that could mean that you are in a lot of pain. Uh, I mean, in, under a lot of morphine. Because that means that your heart's slower. All right? Okay. Any other questions from anyone? No? All right. So, uh, we've covered all the basics, what you have in your kit, and uh, what stuff does and how you pronounce things officially, uh, which I highly encourage everyone to do in the field, as it will avoid a lot of confusion. So, during operations, we have basically a very simple guide on, oh shit, uh, this person tells me something, this is what I need to do. Your patient, your speaking living patient, is your biggest source of information because he can tell you things way quicker than you can check. For example, if a bloke walks up to you and says, Oh no, Cromwell, I'm seeing black and white and my vision is faded, that should ring an instant bell for you that that person requires blood. Uh, and it will usually say, lost a lot of blood in the medical menu, which... It, the automatic step should be to check the blood pressure and to find out why uh, they have a low blood pressure. Usually means they've been shut up a bunch of times so you need to give them more blood. All right? So if you are running out of blood, if you've got very low blood uh, amount in your body, you'll see black and white uh, through ACE. If a guy walks up to you and says, Oh no, I'm hearing my own heart beating between my ears, which is a physical effect you'll hear very loudly, that's a sign of a low BPM, low heart rate. Check the person's pulse and give him epinephrine. That will make the beating go away. Because that counteracts the morphine. Because that's probably why his heart's beating so slowly. The most important thing... One of the first things you really do when someone is downed on the floor, so completely unconscious, is you check their pulse, aka okay, check their BPM. Because this tells you a lot of stuff. If they have no heart rate, you should immediately ask for an assistant and call out by name of the desired assistant, so anyone close by. So don't go, hey, you guardsman. No, say their specific name because that catches their ear. Ask for an assistant and get them to perform CPR for you. When doing CPR, basically a uh, heart massage, always give the person one shot of epinephrine beforehand. Why? 
Epinephrine increases your success rate of performing CPR and the wake-up chance. So a person is way more likely to get up from CPR way quicker if you use a little bit of epinephrine beforehand. Just one single shot, all right? It can happen that you need to perform CPR two or three times on a person before they go up again and get a heart rate. Between rounds of CPR, always check pulse because if you give uh, CPR to a person with a beating heart, you'll stop his heart because you're basically compressing it when it wants to do something else. We'll move on to the final uh, part, which is fractures. In your kit, you should have splints. Splints are used for fixing broken bones in a limb. Uh, broken bones can be caused by falls, getting driven over by a tank, for example, getting armoured, and by, of course, bullet wounds. Uh, the main signs and symptoms of a broken leg is very obvious. The person's fucking limping like a wet noodle, holding his leg, or he looks like he just shat his pants, and there's a lot of shat in there. And by the arm is the most difficult one to diagnose. With the arm, if you've got a broken arm, your aim will be all over the place, but only the person who has that will really notice it. With fractures, you'll also always be in pain as well. To fix a fracture, you need to apply a splint to the body part, which will fully fix it up again. With the medical menu, uh, in the top left, we'll just go all the way back, a final thing I forgot to cover. If you look on the human body, uh, should be at your status or in the top left of your screen. Right now, it is fully white. That means you are fully healed. You are 100% going well. If you get shot, there are several gradients. You have yellow, which means slightly uh, hurt. Red, which means a heavy wound. And that will correspond to that body part, so that image. So, for example, if your right arm is heavily bleeding, it will be bright red. Same thing with your chest and your head. You have one other color variation, which is blue. Blue will mean that you are stitched up or that you are bandaged. You always need to make sure that a person doesn't need to be stitched after you've bandaged him, or you need to make sure you stitch him, because otherwise the wound will reopen again, and you're back to square one, and you have to apply a bandage to that person again. And to stitch someone, you can just look and interact on any body part. With the medical menu, uh, you have a toggle self option. If you walk over to a uh, willing patient of you, and you press H on him, it should say in the top left, should say their name. So for me, it's GDS and pain. And I can click on the toggle self option to go to my own person. I will need to click through advanced treatments, medication, examine patient, etc, etc, if I want to check things. I personally am a big fan of just holding Windows key and looking into the loving eyes of the person and looking on the specific body part I want to treat, just because I find that very easy. Alright? Do I have any questions? So, you can stitch by parts. I mean, uh, you can uh, put some tourniquets on the limbs, uh, bandage the chest and the head, yeah. and stitch you, you, the bandage you can, and the head, right? You can indeed, you can stitch in certain parts. Let's say you've got a, a wound on your head and a wound on your leg. If I bandage up your head and tourniquet your leg, but not fully bandage your leg, and only stitch you, I will only stitch your head, but not your leg, because your leg isn't bandaged. Okay, so you can better. do it in steps, but it's handy to do it all at once. The timer will be a little bit long, but it won't be as long as doing everything separately. Yeah, but the the limbs, for example, can reopen. So yeah, every wound can reopen. It, it truly depends on uh, what speed you want to go at and how fast you want to be. It also depends on the different uh, kinds of wounds. Yeah. Yeah, so if you um, put some splint, uh, so you if you heal a fracture, well, is that a requisite uh, to put a, a ice pack, a personalized kit, ice kit? No, you don't need to use a personal aid kit. Let's say you've got a broken arm, 
I have a physical object like the epinephrine and the bandages in my backpack, which is a splint. I can apply the splint as if it is a bandage by just interacting with you. It will apply it and then it will fix your leg or arm uh, until it gets broken again. It won't ever fade away. Unless your arm gets broken again, then I need to apply another splint. I mean, you can uh, put a personal aid kit instead of putting a, a sum split. No, split. you usually oh, okay, can't okay. pack people because they need to be fully stabilized. They need to be almost fixed up. So a broken bone uh, means that Ace doesn't recognize you as fully stable because you've got a broken bone. It, it's very specific on times. Okay, okay. But that, that's why I personally don't use the pack ever. I used to, but now I don't, because it's just a waste of space. Hasses? Uh, yeah, just just the question, like, how do I know if something just needs a bandage or if it needs stitches too? Alright, um, you will usually have the option, after you bandage someone, to stitch. If it's not there, that means that body part doesn't need to be stitched. Okay. If you bandage someone up, it will appear blue uh, on the medical menu. Uh, but same thing if you've stitched someone. Blue is just the color of where someone has previously had wounds. So it's just a, a thing of looking at the interaction option if it's there. Alright? Alright. Uh, guys, I'll tell you a real quick handy tip from Mr. Stefan the Medic. Uh, stretch better in one section, I believe. The biggest tip from Stefan is checking if someone is fully dead. If you get shot in the head and you flop on the floor like a fat sack of potatoes, uh, usually most people just go, oh, he's dead, without even looking at it. Don't be that guy. Always check if someone is actually dead, because you don't want to leave your comrade bleeding out on the floor when he's very much alive and can hear you. He'll certainly complain about you in the debrief as well. To check if someone is dead, dead, genuinely dead, like call the coroner, dig a six foot deep grave, is by holding down Windows key and seeing if you have the option on interactions on that person, if you can drag him. If you can't drag a person, that means he's fully dead dead. Literally, Grim Reaper, Heaven, Ark, everything. Dead. If you can drag a person and it gives you the option to drag, that will mean he's still alive. So you better get treating him straight away. Right. There's also one Lastly, even quicker way. Um, if you if you see that the person that dropped their gun, then they're also dead dead. If they're not yeah, dead dead, they, they will hang on to their drop guns. Their gun. Yeah. Yeah. If you see their gun fly off into space or just uh, flop beside their body, they're usually dead, fully dead. But if you're unsure, for example, if someone went down in tall wheat, uh, just check if the interaction is there. And last but not least, uh, before we go on to a little bit of shooting practice for me and medical practice for you, is priority. It may sound very fucked up, and it is kind of fucked up, but it is the way of life. Some people have higher priority than others. Uh, who have incredibly high priority? Uh, COs and NCOs, simply because they keep the section or their carrier running. If you see three dead people next to each other, or downed people, should I say, one of them is your section commander, and the other two are random guardsmen, uh, please, for the love of God, dive onto that NCO first and treat him up. Once he's stable or fixed up, you can go on to the rest. Um, this also includes other sections and even the tanks. If you see a tank commander is knocked out, or he requires uh, a bandaging or a stitch, please go help him out. You are not dedicated to just your own section. You can move between sections, you can treat other people if the need arises. You should of course stick with your own section as much as possible, but if your section is conducting an attack, and you have Grant bleeding out on the floor next to you, you know who you should be giving your attention to. <laughs> Alright? I have a question about that. Yep. Uh, under the assumption that there is a, like a, an NCO and like a medic, 
which do you heal first because it would make more sense to heal the medics so you can heal even yeah. more people in that case still nco nco's highest priority always oh, okay Wonderful. because it, it, nco keeps the entire up. operation running um especially if it's an nco of very high rank uh because he uh listens to the commands from the platoon and redirects his entire section yes it's very sad that there's a stretcher better. Of course, you don't want a situation like that. Usually, it goes well. But um, stretcher better is worth a lot less than an NCO. Uh, stretcher better can respawn, get back to the front, and can form in whenever. If an NCO's gone, that's a severe limitation to his own section or his own men. Oh, yeah. Don't be afraid to waste medical supplies on someone. If someone needs five liters of blood, fucking give him five liters of blood. And then go over to the next resupply. Uh, don't be a little rat and think, Oh no, I might use this two bandages later on. Uh, I better not use any more bandages on this person and call them dead. Don't do that. If you've got nothing, you can say, Hey, I could do nothing for him. Uh, but please make sure you go up to the person because they usually can hear you through Ace if they're unconscious. Even if they have no heart rate. And just tell them, Hey, uh, I don't have any medical supplies. Sorry, run off. But if you have any, just don't abandon them. Only abandon if you are sure that you can't help them. For example, if you have no blood on your person and the guy on the floor has lost a fatal amount of blood, yeah, good luck, you can pull out a fucking rabbit from your hat, but it's not going to do anything. You can't get him up no matter what. What if it's like he's down with like fatal amount of blood loss and you have like three liters left, but you know... If you heal him, the three next guys to get down will die. Don't think about that. Just heal him. Try your best. There will always be resupplies. We have a resupply truck within the platoon driven by Beckett with medical crates. You can always pick up extra medical supplies when you see a box because you have first dips on it. And you can always go up to other stretcher bedders, ask them for help or ask them for blood. Share his care. They will. Normal. So you can't overblood someone. No, you typically can't pump someone with too much blood. That's stupid, for sure. Very hard. <laughs> it's also not supported in, a in Ace. Overall speaking, an NCO is highest priority. You should always tend to an NCO first. Of course, if an NCO needs a little stitch on his fucking little toe. Uh, meanwhile, you've got your hands full with Mr. I'm on the floor, have more bullets inside of me than a fucking cannon. Uh, yeah. Then you should obviously prioritize the bloke that's on the floor because he will die if you treat someone else before him. It's just your own judgment on that situation on that very moment. But overall speaking, NCO has priority. Yeah, I get it. Right? So. <laughs> I can get more questions. Uh, first of all, uh, what about looting? Am I allowed to loot like like dead comrades and, and enemies for medical supplies or not? Yeah, don't make it your top priority. So don't go uh, doing a scavenge hunts for everything uh, that's dead. But if there's a juicy corpse laying in front of you and you could use one or two more uh, morphine injectors, fucking go for it. Just remember, you can take enemy uh, medical supplies, you can loot their uh, amu uh, their medical crates like these, you just can't take their helmets, their guns or uh, their uniforms just can't wear them yeah, of course taking a little answer. sidearm as a souvenir is fine yeah, good to know uh, and the, the other question is is triage ever used? no we, we typically in World War 2 you didn't really triage anyone uh, you had very, very bad people, or people who were about to die, and then you'd have, of course, the lesser priority persons, but you wouldn't exactly triage someone. Uh, so we don't use it, and we don't apply triages to people in the field, because you simply don't have time for that. What's a triage? Triage is basically uh, a way of indicating, hey, this person is slightly wounded oh. and low priority, this person is heavily wounded, high priority, I give up on this person, and this person is very dead. That's a triage. It's basically color cards, but we don't use them. 
anything else? Otherwise, I'd like to move on with my firing no, practice. Done. All right. So, uh, pick your best buddy. Stand out of the way with each other. So make sure you're about 10 meters away from each other. And I will shoot one of you at random. And then the other person has to fix you up. Now, hey, it can be that you get a little scratch on your tiny little toe. It can be that you get a bullet between the eyes. Who knows? Who will be lucky? Who will be unlucky? I volunteer with tribute. No. Right, go ahead and fix the other person up Telegram quickly. <laughs> All right. Can't fix you up yet. Stay still. Keep staying still. Working, I'm working. All right, I'm doing uh, stitch right now. Stay still. You're getting some morphine, then you should be fine. Okay. Okay. So you're in severe pain? Yep. Uh, you can do with it. <laughs> okay, never mind, your heart rate's fucked. So you're not your heart rate. Uh, blood your pressure's pressure a bit high, fucked. but you got morphine. You're gonna another morphine shot. No, I'm giving you one Actually, morphine. Good to go. If you start hearing your heartbeat, please tell me. But yeah, enjoy. This will be okay, I guess. You good? Yep. Alright, he's still in pain. You can stitch him as well. Much better than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just check your blood pressure. Let me right, just check you out and you can see if you get, if you get another. You might another see the option to pack the someone. Pressure is okay. Yeah, you have to be Because they're though. almost I'll fully fixed up. Anything. It's normal. Yeah, it's because they're uh, morphing. Yeah, yeah, but, but you're you really, I'm, really down I'm to 55. Pain, so. Okay, let's just see if your pulse stabilizes your blood pressure. And then you'll get some And your pulse is stable. Yeah, let's just wait a bit. Blood pressure is a little low, but that's just because, um... Yeah, she will stabilize. It'll help. work. It should come up in a moment. But yeah, just let that morphine wear off and you're fine. Alright, is everyone fixed up? Almost. I know, we're fine. Did you give yourself morphine? Mm. I think All you right. can just pack me. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, might as well. I quickly healed everyone oh, to fully fix you up. <laughs> Remember, you are to get people stable and functioning. You're not supposed to get them back up to full health and to enjoy their holiday resort on the Greek coast. Aww. So, you don't need to fully tend to everyone in every single way. If someone's lost a tiny bit of blood, let them. They can still fight. You're just there to make sure they don't die. Alright? And still can fight on. Could all people that haven't been shot step forward? God, I love saying that. <laughs> Ouch. Good luck with your other I haven't partners. been shot. Oh, okay, get over here, corporate. Stop saluting. Get, get over here. Get on the ground now, kitten. Kitten, you appear. Alright, Stuart, go ahead and fix yourself up. Yeah, yeah. Come um, on. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still. Uh, yeah, so how's the pain? I'm still in severe pain. Okay. Is it? You, you might want to check my blood and, and uh, uh, blood pressure too. Heart rate and blood pressure, I mean, both. See, blood pressure is still a bit high. Okay, you should be fine in a yeah, little bit. Yeah, it's stabilizing. You are still in pain? Well, yeah. Are you? Yeah. Okay. Still in pain. Just right. wait a few hey, seconds, Stewart. you shouldn't be. Go ahead and pick up this rifle, shoot me in the chest. Mild pain should be good to go. Shoot me in the leg, that might be better. Ow! Yeah, it's just mild pain. Oh yeah, I... Yeah, it's low. <laughs> I am God! <laughs> No, no, so I'm fine. I don't need another. If it's mild pain, I can just, I can just walk it off. It's because of the morphine. If you let it yeah. stay below, it'll come up. All right. Um, yeah. All right. We'll try with the next person. I remember. I, I, I'm set to be invisible. That's why. It'll be fine. No, you're still invisible. <laughs> You still have pain? Uh, it's just mild pain, that's okay. Right, just wait a bit. 
Right. How's this pain? Are you, uh... I'm, I'm okay. I'm in mild pain. Yeah, mostly. It's gone. Yeah, you good. Ooh, yeah. Right, passes. <laughs> Maybe I should do me a favor. Have a give you the shoot pain in the head, chest morphin. with your Enfield. Pain. Uh, I'm you're gonna be treated sorry. up by Stewart. <laughs> right, so I suggest you get up to him right now because he's gonna die very soon. I think. No, he's not. Come on, fine. As you can see, he's got a very large velocity wound. You've already treated him up. There we go. Hey. He's in severe pain. Is it normal that the pain like comes to me? Stitching him up. You're not done yet, Stuart. I can't hear you. You're very quiet. Right, well, you don't normally give morphine, but you should. But what do you... What's going to happen with this wound again? You've just bandaged it going to reopen uh, again yeah. so you need to stitch it yeah fair enough <laughs> he's in severe pain i suggest you give him one shot of morphine i'll give you some drugs buddy also when treating other patients you will always use their medical supplies first you'll use their bandages their morphine so don't worry about running out of your own kit very soon or by not carrying enough bandages because you use their their person's bandages first I'll just hang There you go. Done. All right, everyone, uh, group up in front of me again. Right, so, uh, Stuart, please don't shoot you in the air. That concludes the Stretch a Better module. Uh, just make sure you are knowledgeable and able to do uh, what you do best treating people uh, if you all stay here I'll quickly assign each and every one of you on the sheet uh, to certified which means you can be requested or put in as a stretcher better for an operation all right start with Coburn Coburn's medical train now Harsis, Harsis yep. trains, uh, Cromwell, medical trains, Moffat, medical trains, Payne, medical trains, Abel, medical trains, Stewart, Medical trains. Have I forgotten anyone? I have not. You're all done on the sheets. Right. Uh, so that concludes it. You may disconnect. Or if you want to, I can shoot you a lot of times in the chest and other people can heal you up. Can I drive the car? Yes, it's the training server. Go ahead. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. I'm gonna just <laughs> no, no, get over here. Get over here. Get over here. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, I bid my farewell. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'll, I'll see how many uh, penetrating the north I can get into me before I'm dead. Uh, so, uh, that's the fun thing. You can put a tourniquet in your arm. No, no, I mean, I mean, like, you know, put, take some like, epinephrine, take some morphine, take some epinephrine, take some morphine. If you take three All right. of one, then you'll go unconscious. Yeah, but, but if, if I you, counteract it, it should be fine. If you counteract it every time. Yeah, but morphine no. lasts longer, so eventually you, you will lose. Not really, heart rate. because it just stabilizes. Unless. I'm not sure if uh, passing out on literal overdose is activated here, so it might just be that you'll pass out after like three or four. Just because you had too much. Point is, I'm figuring it out. Dead.
I just I just gave myself two happies in a row and my heart rate and then the blood pressure is still okay. Just give it a few seconds. Maybe I'm um, just fucked. Heart rate 99, that's not very good. No, that, no 99 is fine. 100 is still fine. <laughs> it's a bit exciting, but it's still fine. Okay, I read it. Oh, that's, that's not the drugs. Bomb. <laughs> sure. I wish it was the drugs. Look at that mushroom. What can you think of eating right now? Oh. We are not. Oh. Oh, come on. 